Titration is basically an experimental technique that we use when we have one solution for which we know the concentration and the volume, and the other solution for which we do not know the volume or the concentration. Now, we do this when one solution reacts with another solution, as is the case in acids and bases. So we know that when acid reacts with the base, it creates salt, water, and sometimes it also creates carbon dioxide. But what is important here is that if we know how much of acid we have to add, then we can figure out how much of the base will react with it. So if, let's suppose, the concentration of the acid is unknown, you can use a known concentration of an alkali to figure that out. That's the idea of titration. You have to mix the alkali and the acid just in the right amount so that you know how much volume of acid is used and what the concentration is for that. Now, one thing that we use for this is an indicator to know when they have reacted because acids and alkalis are mostly colorless. Now, how does this work? Because you want to mix them, then of course you need something to add the acid with, something to add the base with, and something to mix them in. Usually, we take one solution, let's suppose that is acid, and the one that we know the volume or the concentration of, we put that in a in a pipette and we take that to add it to the mixing thing, which is the conical flask. So we have a pipette, which is also called a pipette. We have a burek and we have a conical flask. So again, what you're doing is you're taking one solution in a pipette, you're taking another solution from the burek and you're mixing them together in the conical flask. And to know how much of that is to be added, you use an indicator. So these are the four requirements of any titration process. Okay, so pipettes usually have a fixed volume. For example, in the lab, you'll work with pipettes that are in 25 cm cube or sometimes 50 cm cube, but usually smaller ones could be 10 cm cube as well. In burets, you do not know what volume to add, but a buret measures how much volume has been taken out. That is why a buret usually starts at zero and ends at whatever the total volume is, could be 50 and all that. And it has a tap at the bottom because this tap allows us to control how much of the liquid goes out of the burette and whatever volume you know and whenever you stop, that is the volume that we have that reacts with 25 cm cube of the pipette solution. And you're mixing them together in a conical flask. And the reason we use a conical flask is because it has a narrow neck, which allows for easier handling and swirling, but it has a broad base. And that makes sure that in the broad base, it mixes together, but through the narrow neck, it does not spill that easily. So conical flask is where they're going to be mixed together. So we know the volume and the concentration of the thing in pipette. So let me take an example. Let's suppose I have HCl reacting with NaOH, both of them aqua solutions, making of course sodium chloride and water. Sodium chloride is also aqueous and water is liquid as you know. Now let's suppose I know that I have 25 cm cube of HCl and the concentration is 0 0.5 moles per dm cube. And I want to know how much of sodium hydroxide will completely react with this much HCl when I do not know the volume or the concentration. So what I'll do is I'll take this thing which I know of in a pipette and use that to be added to the conical flask. Similarly, I'll take the sodium hydroxide in a burette and I'll add it into the conical flask. But the indicator will tell me how much to add. So here's the process. First step, I'll take, using the pipette, I will take the 25 cm cube of the acid and pour 25 cm cube of acid into the conical flask. Now in the conical flask, I have added basically N equal to CV, number of moles equals to concentration times volume. Concentration I already know is 0 0.5 mole per dm cube. Volume I've selected myself, 25 cm cube. And using a pipette, make sure that I'm using a very precise volume, just 25.00 cm cube of that. So I know the moles of acid that I've added. Now I'll add a couple of drops of an indicator. Now this will tell me when their reaction is complete and I could use phenoxylene, I could use methyl orange, or I could use many other indicators that we use for titration. Just make sure you do not use a universal indicator or any other indicator that is a slow one 
that shows gradual change. We need something that shows a sudden change because usually the equivalence point or where the reaction is complete is a very small volume which makes a difference. Now I've added that and now the solution will show a certain color. Now I will start adding the alkali from the burette. So add alkali from the burette. Now remember, I do not know how much alkali to add because I do not know the concentration of the alkali, which means I cannot figure out the number of moles of alkali that will react. But what I do know is that the moment I've added enough, the indicator will change color. And that's what happens. The moment I see a change, I stop. So add alkali from the burette until a color change is seen. This color change is basically telling me that I've added enough. It depends on the indicator what the color change is, but once I've added enough alkali, the color change will show that you have added enough. Now, at that point, stop the burette and read the volume from the burette. So you get the volume from the burette. And that's the whole point of using a burette. It has zero at the top and it tells us whenever you stop, it tells us what volume you've added. So let's suppose in this particular case, I add 22 cm cube of the alkali. Now, I do not know the concentration, but remember one thing. The ratio method of the equation tells me that Cv over N of the first solution is equal to Cv over N of the second solution. This is a very straightforward, very useful shortcut for this, where one and two basically stand for one solution and the second solution. In this case, one would be acid and the second would be alkali or the other way around. This capital N is basically the number of moles from the equation, the ratio from the equation. So in this case, it is one and one. If this was H2S of 4 and NOH, it will be 1 and 2. So we just pick these values from here. Okay, so let's plug them in. I know, let's suppose my first solution is acid. I know I have 0 0.5 moles per dm cube and I have 25 cm cube, 25 over 1000 dm cube basically. And the N is 1. On this side, I have the alkali. For alkali, I do not know the concentration, but I do know that the volume is, let's suppose, 22 cm cube and this is 22 over 1000. By the way, when you're using this formula, as long as your units are same on both sides, you don't need to divide by 1000. And now I'll divide it by 1 because the molar ratio is also 1. And when I solve this, I will figure out that this 1 cancels out with this 1000. And I basically end up with 0 0.5 into 25 over 22 equals to my concentration. And whatever this value is in moles per dm cube, that is my concentration of the unknown solution of the alkali that I had. And it's all possible because I'm able to do Titration. Titration, as I've told you, is a technique that we use to figure out the concentration of the unknown solution using a solution which we already know the concentration of. In this case, it was the acid for which we knew the concentration and we have figured out the concentration of the alkali. And that's the whole idea of titration.